Oh, listen, I think this is a painful exercise in patience, this whole pandemic. I mean, we're waiting for the vaccines. Uh, we're waiting until schools are back. That's despite protocols being in place. Next, we'll be waiting until after winter. Uh, we'll be waiting to go from outdoor to indoor. But, you know, what What do we actually have to do? Because everyone has signed up to this. We will do it. We thought vaccines were the answer. And if they're not, why not? If they're not, what's the alternative? And at what point do we move on like the rest of Europe? Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. We have what? I think it's 83% of mm-hmm. adults uh, fully vaccinated, 90% one dose. I saw a figure yesterday, I think I'm right in saying 75% of over 12 year olds are fully vaccinated. All those over 75, all those over t- um, uh, 12. At what point mm. do we, be, uh, you're right, at what point do we begin to get back to normal? We have to learn to live with COVID. COVID is going to be with us. That is quite clear. It's yeah. not going to vanish or go away. Like, so, of course, public health is important. And of course, I don't know how e- anyone's even taught. When I hear people saying, oh, uh, we need to look at whether it's a good idea to reopen schools. That's bonkers. Schools have to reopen. They cannot We cannot lose any more school time. And yes, public health is important, but so is the economy. So is our well-being. So is our mental health. And I agree with you. I think we have to start learning to live with COVID. And September, to me, is the point where we need to start getting back to normal because we have the vaccination levels. I agree with you there. And the schools will come back and there will be pockets of outbreaks in schools. We know that. But schools have been managing with this so far. So they know what to do. There are protocols in place for them to manage it. So let's just move on. OK, let us know what you think. Are we being too cautious? When do we need to brave, uh, to be brave and to seek to return to normal? 5206 for 30 cent. Our tweet is at NT Breakfast. Uh, let's bring in uh, Paul Moyna, Professor of Immunology and Director of the Kathleen Lonsdale Institute for Human Health Research at Maynooth University. Paul, I, I don't know if you heard our discussion there. Are we being too cautious? Is the government being too cautious? Morning, Shane. Um, I think what seems to be happening is we continuously push things back. You know, you just mentioned there this morning, you know, modelling suggesting it's not going to peak until the end of September. And the reality is we don't have that level of accuracy in terms of, of prediction. Like during the summer, I thought during the summer would have been a good time to open up quite a lot of the activities, whether that be, you know, events, uh, music. Uh, I thought that would be a good time. But more importantly, I think that would have been a good time to do all of these pilots. You know, we, we did pilots back in the middle of the summer, for example, outdoor events in the Ivy Gardens, where essentially it was set up in such a way that there was, there was no risk. So it was, it, was, it was a pointless exercise. And instead at that stage, we should have been looking at events that would mirror what it actually reflects in reality and to try to capture and reflect that risk and put in place and evaluate measures that would mitigate that risk. And instead, we're still talking about pilots in that situation. And I think really the narrative and discussion has to change. And we, we, we really need to, have to start discussing and ask the question, are we getting to the stage where we're getting to be as close as it's going to get? Because you mentioned figures there, Shane, you know, 90% of adults, one dose, 83% of adults fully vaccinated. Um, for the vaccinated population, is this as good as we're going to get? And that's okay. the question I think that we have to be tasked to ask. Uh, Paul, just bear with us. Paul, just bear with us one second. We're just getting a little bit of interference in your line. Um, sorry, Paul, I think we have you back now. You were, you were yeah, continue making the point you were making. Yeah, so really the point I'm making is we could be getting close to the stage where we're going to get as good as, as it's going to be. Um, we're, we've most of the adult population, like 90%, uh, singly, at least singly vaccinated, 83% fully vaccinated. And, and these vaccines are doing what they were supposed to do, what they were tested to do. They're protecting us really well against serious illness and hospitalisation. What is appearing now are these breakthrough infections. Probably shouldn't surprise us but there will be breakthrough infections. There will be more breakthrough infections. So we're not going to be able to eradicate this virus because these vaccines will not give us sterilising immunity. But importantly, they're really, really good in terms of protecting us against illness. So I think that the context needs to be that we're getting very close to, if not we're already there, in terms of as good as it's going to get. And again, I think this should be reflected in terms of some of the things we begin to think about. So when you hear reports that you know, there won't be any further reopening until the end of September, is that too cautious in your view? But Shane, again, I don't think we should be surprised with this. And I think, you know, we need to be up front. And this is the problem I've had from 
during the summer, when we decided not to open to various things during the summer, were we seriously saying that we were going to open up things at the beginning of September when schools were going to be reopened, universities, we were going to be coming to winter months? Things do not get easier. They don't get easier. So I think we need to be up front. Uh, I think, you know, probably last year as well, I think we need to use the times of the year better. So, for example, in the summer where transmission is lower, we need to use those times. Whereas I think the approach has been to, you know, we will stay closed down and that will be credit in the bank for later on in the year. That's not the way it works because we have to use the times of the year to our advantage as well. Uh, you, you say we're not surprised, uh, we shouldn't really be surprised that the case numbers are still going up. I suppose it is a little demoralising. I think people, even people who accept the case you're making, that we shouldn't be necessarily guided by case numbers. It is a little demoralising to ha- have such high figures when such high percentage of the population are vaccinated. It is, Shane, but again, we have to look at other countries and be informed by other countries. So, for example, if you look at Israel, Israel was really first here in terms of mass vaccination, for example, using the Pfizer. We're looking at numbers going up really, really steeply now in Israel. Still doing a pretty good job. Yes, some of them are translating into, you know, illness and cases in hospital. But we're now seeing, for example, when a population, you know, quite extensive vaccination, we are getting these breakthrough cases as well as the unvaccinated still getting infected. And that's the reality of the situation now. We need to look at a situation where there will be these breakthrough infections vaccination will protect most of us, will actually limit, yes, it will reduce the number of people who are getting infected, will reduce the transmission, but not to zero. So we're going to get to a situation where this virus will be around, and but with time it will become endemic and we're getting close, I think, to that uh, situation. But we need to, you know, in, in terms of planning, we need to be upfront as well in terms of, you know, giving people hope to open at certain times in the year when we know, for example, September is going to coincide with schools opening. So I just think we need to be more aware of that and also up front with people in terms of the level of expectation and managing that expectation. OK, and, and sorry, just just finally, and uh, I mean, is it a case of, say, I know you're saying we probably should have done more during the summer. We haven't. Uh, I mean, is there an argument for saying, OK, let's hold off till September because we do want the schools to be open. But at that point, we need to start living with COVID. I, I, I think we need... So, so even though I say that, you know, we should have, should have known or, you know, again, manage that expectation, again, I'd be more positive, Shane. I may give the impression of negative, but I, I think here we're getting close to as good as we're going to get. So, again, I don't quite see the reason in terms of continuously delaying things. Okay. I think we're at a stage now and in certain sectors, sectors that need help and need support and need to begin to be opened up that probably should have taken place earlier, I think we need to look at that.